Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Jim, and I am so glad you are joining us either in here in our worship service online or by video afterwards. So thank you for joining us in worship today. Um, I want to mention again, once again, some upcoming events. Back to Church Sunday is Sunday, September 18th. We are going to celebrate inviting people back to church. We shouldn't have to celebrate us coming back to church. We do that as Christ followers, right? We, go, we attend worship. So we want to celebrate the fact that this is an opportunity to remind us to invite others back to church. Whether they have been in worship every week for the, for the past several years or whether they haven't been to worship in a long, long time. This is your opportunity to invite them to come with you to worship, to Bible study, to any type of church event that we have, fellowship, whatever. And the theme this year for, for National Back to Church Sunday, you've seen it on the screen, is hope happens here. That's a pretty powerful, those are powerful words. And we know as Christ followers, hope doesn't just happen in at 80 Starrett Street in this building. It happens throughout our lives, wherever we are, if we believe Christ is with us. But for Back to Church Sunday, hope happens here. And for every Sunday, hope happens here. We read God's word, we listen for his voice, we hear him speaking to us, we speak to him in prayer. That creates hope in our lives, in our hearts. And so, that's the theme, and that's what we're celebrating. Um, also, that same week, on the 21st of September, Meal with a Message is going to begin on Wednesday of that week, September 21st. We will have dinner together downstairs in Fellowship Hall, and then we'll break out into children's groups and adult and teens group up here um, to talk about core discipleship for the adults. And so um, please consider and prayerfully consider joining us for that. Um, we want each and everybody to be here if they want to be. All right? It's a wonderful time of, of dinner, fellowship, um, and scripture. Um, so consider joining us for that. And I think that's the only announcements I have today. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Good morning. God says, I am the fountain of living water. I will feed you with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock. You who have wandered far from me, return to me, return to me. You who have gathered close, stay near, stay near. I am the fountain of living water. You are our strength. Please join me in singing our opening hymn as we stand together, if able. Mm -hmm. 
to each person next to you and pass the peace of Jesus Christ to them. They will respond by saying, and also with you, the peace of Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> I didn't expect you to come up behind me. I didn't want to forget you. <laughs> God's word assures us, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. All together, Lord, we confess that we love attention. We are pleased when people single us out for something good that we have done, or some outstanding act or trait of kindness that we exhibit. We reveal, revel in the light, but the seductive light too often captures us, and we seek its brightness and glory. We turn our backs on others in need. We have given many gifts, but have failed to use them. Forgive us our vanity, greed, and pride. Heal our wounded and aching souls. Place us again the pathway of peace, and hope is your way to true life. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ has lifted us up and dusted us off. He has claimed us as his own. Let us celebrate his love for us in the lives of service to others. In Christ, we are forgiven. Lord, in the direction you would have us go, open our hearts with a deeper awareness of your precious word and give us the grace to love you more and serve you better in the place where you have placed us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Old Testament reading, Isaiah 42, 5 through 9. This is what God the Lord says the creator of the heavens who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives us breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, 
have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. To open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. This is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or praise my or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. We changed things up today. Did anyone notice? I did. <laughs> Good. We thought it was important that the children hear the scripture before the children's message, not after. And so we just rearranged things just a little bit. So um, I'm going to read our New Testament reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, 1 to 8, and 15 and 16. Hear God's word. I keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. May God bless our hearing of his word this day. All praise, honor, and glory go to him. It's time for the children's message. Come on up front. Thank you. All right. Uh, So first, I want to talk about change. Can you guys tell me anything you can think of, good or bad, that's a change? Go ahead, AJ, sit up. Money. Money. Oh, there's like that kind of change. Of course, throw me a curveball. Nice job. (laughs) Jingle, jingle. Okay. Do you, can you think of a change? All right, well, I'm prepared. I'm prepared. In case they didn't have any answers, Lord, bless the use of this altar. Amen. First change. In kitchen utensils, right here, this is an egg measurer. Raise your hand. A grater. A grater. I apologize. To grade the quality of an egg. You know, you can always be wrong in what you're saying. This is a utensil. At one point in time, raise your hand if you currently own one or use it. Right there, right there, ding, ding, ding. And the egg guy, he's like, no, he didn't even raise his hands, you know what I mean? So, right there. That is a change in life in the kitchen. Now, there's lots of different other kind of change. You guys, I got something special for you. Grown-ups, you know what these are, right here. Take this, put it in your hand. You can keep it in your pocket. I will give it to you. Does anyone know what one of these are, grown-ups? 
Slides, that's right, slides made from negatives. That's how we used to look at pictures in the olden days. Now, I'm going to show you another change. This one right here, this was before they invented color. This is called a black and white photo. This is my mommy. Would you come up here in a minute and will you hold this so everybody can look how beautiful my mommy is? This is my mommy. And this is how much my mommy changed. And that little one in there, do you know who that is? You. That's right. And look, this is how much this one has changed in life. Thank you so much. I'm going to put that back in real careful so nothing happens to it. Thank you. You know, in life, everything changes. Fashion changes, and sometimes it comes back. You know, don't understand what's going right now in fashion, but it relives itself. Everything changes. Cars change. We used to walk around on our feet and horses. Then they invented this cool stuff called asphalt and built us roads, and now we drive cars. And even cars have changed. Sometimes change can be scary. Sometimes going from young to old is a hard thing. Sometimes going from electric or from gas powered motors to electric motors can be scary. A lot of things in our lives change no matter what. That is always going to happen. Change. But there is one thing that doesn't ever, ever, ever change. And Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Tells us what it is, but AJ thinks he knows the answer. Go ahead, AJ. What is the answer? God's love. Oh, excellent. Not just God's love. God's love, yes. But God and Jesus being there never, ever changes. Preacher read it in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So no matter what horrible, crazy, insane, or exciting change that's going on in your life, God is the constant in it. And he's with you. He's with your parents when you're the next one to leave the nest because that's not an easy change for them. And when puberty happens and your whole body changes, God's still there for you. And when your knees don't work anymore because the warranty wore out, God is always there for you because God is the foundation that never changes. Fold your hands, close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, sometimes it's hard to be thankful for change. Sometimes all we see changes as a black nothing that we cannot control. But Lord, help us to remember to hand that to you, to hand it over with all our hearts because you don't change. You love us, you comfort us, and you're there for us to rely on no matter what change is going on in our life. In your name we all say... I cannot tell you how long ago I first read the classic devotional from Oswald Chambers titled My Utmost for His Highest. It was most likely over 15 years ago. And I read it daily or weekly for over a year before putting it on a bookshelf because it seemed just a little too deep for me back then. Well, I admit that I have pulled that devotional off the shelf multiple times since then to reread it and to do those devotions. And most recently, in a Bible study with two other gentlemen, it was suggested by the author that we use this daily devotional in our personal devotions. And I have enjoyed it and often been challenged by it. Um, daily, weekly, and I want to read for you a meditation from this devotional based on our passage in the book of Hebrews today. It goes like this, God has said, 
so that we can boldly say dot, dot, dot. That was the title of the devotional. Then came these two sentences in this devotional. My say-so is to be built on God's say-so. And God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, I can say with courage, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. So, that's a very powerful statement. I will never leave you or forsake you. How many of you have given the reason for anything that we do not understand using the words, because God made it so, or... God made it that way, or that was God's plan. How many of you have used that reason? Yeah, I have. Perhaps it would be good for all of us, though, to recognize that God has given us a lot of those kind of say-sos. A lot. The Bible is full of them. In a lot of different circumstances in our lives, are they applied God says so, and that's why it's true. And here's the bonus good news for each one of us. These are all found right here, in one place, in one book, the book, the Bible. We do not have to go looking all over the place for those reasons or those statements or those promises. We don't have to wander around thinking that those answers are nowhere to be found. They're right there. Just like the Israelites in the desert wilderness who found fresh manna each and every day, there's bread for our spiritual journey today, tomorrow, and every day. Just like the widow of Zarephath, some of you may remember the widow of Zarephath, who kept going back to the barrel and finding new flour every single day. God provided Just like our spiritual journey, that spiritual bread will not be depleted from us. God's word gives us sustaining, inspiring, and directional power for each of our journeys in this life, no matter where you are on that journey. God says so that you can say dot, 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 fill in the blank. One of the main examples, and perhaps the strongest example of this in our passage, is that God has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. That's a major God says so, because it applies to everything in your life, if you allow it, if you understand it. Because of this promise, we can say boldly, I will not be afraid, no matter what it is. Psalm 118, verse 6 says the same thing to us. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? And of course, this kind of courage and certainty do not come easily in these days, especially. So many uncertainties and so many fearful events. A modern theologian said this, Today, in this culture, you cannot be a popular preacher and remain faithful at the same time. He may be right about preachers and pastors' challenges today, but I also think he's right about all Christ's followers today as well. There are lines that are too clearly drawn between the culture we live in 24-7 and what God says to us about living as a disciple, making other disciples. But because because God says so, I will never leave you nor forsake you, we can say, I will not be afraid of any of those circumstances. Even when apprehension, fear, or our own weaknesses get between God's say-so and our sense of security, We need to remember to boldly think and proclaim that we will not be afraid, even if it's just to ourselves. The courage comes directly from God's say-so and God's promise. 
This is a powerful God say so indeed. And I want to give you a demonstration of an example of another of these God says so statements. The statement appears in verse 8 of Hebrews 13. Mary talked about it. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Here's the example. There's a man named Bill Irwin who is blind. He, is all, he also has a talking computer that he uses to study the Bible. Now, he's had a few chuckles over some of the pronunciations by his computer. And he says this, for a long time, the computer pronounced Holy Bible as Holly Bibble. And until I figured out how to modify that software program. But there was one thing Bill could not change. And he admits it. You see, this computer uses the Spanish pronunciation for Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. The programmer is Hispanic, Bill has told people when they ask, and he smiles at that and says, and he made sure that Jesus Christ cannot be altered. I like that. Jesus Christ cannot be altered. I like that a lot. When I read about Bill, when I read about Bill, it reminded me that among the things in life, this life, that can be changed to suit my opinion or my preferences, one thing remains tamper resistant. And I can't change Jesus Christ. Whenever our lives become unsettled or challenging, and they do, right? You all know that. They do, and they will again. Don't we gain great comfort from the Bible's affirmation that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow? Because God says that he himself, in Jesus Christ, is unchangeable or constant, we can say with confidence that is comforting in any of my times of challenge. But the statement is also a stern correction to our tendency to try to modify these words and character of Christ when we don't like what he says. How easy it is to forget that we came to Christ longing for him to change us, not the reverse. Praise God that his word and his love are perfect and unchanging. And praise him, too, that his love, he is working to change us. It may be helpful for us to consider some context for this passage in the book of Hebrews. Just a little bit. First, you may believe that this book of the Bible is considered by many to, to be a series of written sermons. I don't know how many of you knew that, but that's pretty common knowledge among Bible scholars. That's a common belief, I should say. There is some disagreement on who the preacher is exactly who wrote Hebrews. Some believe it's the Apostle Paul. Others believe it was Apollos. Still others believe it was Barnabas. You see, unlike in other letters in the New Testament, the author does not identify himself but it would have to be someone well known to the recipients of this letter. And the recipients of this letter were Jewish Christians who were familiar, very familiar with the Old Testament. Hebrews is believed to have been written before the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD. And as you and I read Hebrews chapter 13, we may miss some very important stress or emphasis because we are reading an English translation. Hebrews 13 verse 5 is a rare verse in the original language of Greek. Very rare. It has been simply translated by many as he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's pretty understandable, right? That's good English. But it is not good Greek in this instance. 
You see, this verse in the original language contains an unusual triple negative in Greek. Now, a triple negative is not good English, but it is good Greek. It should be translated, he will never, never, never leave us or forsake us. Three nevers. Whenever I first read this original language verse, I began to think about the reason behind this triple negative. Remembering my seminary language classes, I concluded that it must be very, very, very important. It is very Hebraic, very Jewish to answer a question with a triplicate. And here's why. Jewish commentators, every one of them, believe that that is, a very, that is the proper way of confirming the truth in the testimony of more than two witnesses, three witnesses. It's very Trinitarian also in our belief system, right? Jesus used this method often. You might remember him saying, verily, 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 I say to you, One verily was not enough for Christ. However, there, here is a nugget that I picked up from another commentary on Hebrews. Here in Hebrews 13, verse 5, maybe there is more than just Jewish grammar at stake. Maybe this is the heart of God speaking to a hurting child to remind the, that little one that he is there always. And who is God? Three in one, one in three. There is this communication from this child of God to God himself. Father, I am so weak. I have failed you in so many ways. Will you ever leave me? I can hear a child saying that. God the Father looked at me and said, no, I will never leave you. I created you. God the Son looked at the child and said, No, I will never leave you. I died for you. God the Holy Spirit looked at me and said, No, I will never leave you. I live inside of you. That's three times. This is precisely what makes this God says say so's so that I can say truth so powerful. You and I will never, never, never be alone because God says so. So we can say with confidence, with faith, and with boldness that we will not be afraid, ever. There's a final result of the God says so statements that we all should respond with in our lives. I've, I included these final two verses in our reading today of chapter 13 because of the preacher is tying the God says so truth together with by stating our response to God in our lives. Verse 15 and 16 tell us, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name, and do not forget to do good and share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. How exactly are you offering to God a sacrifice of praise? Think about that. Remember that animal sacrifices as offerings are now obsolete in the 21st century, right? What is a sacrifice of praise that the fruit of our lips might confess his name? We certainly offer confession of his name in worship every week together, right? I would dare to say that this type of sacrifice is much more than a weekly confession in worship every seven days. Yes, that kind of confession is helpful and it's an important part of your and my faith journey and our worship. But this sacrifice of praise that the author's talking about 
is being described as a result of Jesus Christ living, dying, and rising for every one of us. As a result of Jesus Christ ministering, loving, and healing the least of these, this sacrifice of praise is a response to God saying so for our benefit and for our good, and it applies to every one of our days in this life. I would ask you to think about your relationship with Jesus Christ. How has he blessed you each and every day? What can you say in your own life because of what God has said so in your own life? Has he been there in your trials and in those moments when you have needed a rock to hold on to? On Calvary, he told us all that his body was given for us, broken for our sin as an offering to God. He told us his blood was poured out as an offering to seal the new covenant of eternal life. Jesus gave us his best gift, and then he promised that it was just the beginning. It was just the beginning. How are you going to respond to that? kind of gift? How will you offer your first gift of praise, your first fruit of praise on your lips, in your life? Will you declare that you will come to worship at church regularly for the next year? I hope so. Will you declare that you will find a ministry that you can get involved with and take a lead so that your offering can bless others? Will you pick up your Bible and read it regularly and even consider joining a Bible study so that you can learn more about all of God's promises? Will you find a way, a unique way, that only you can find to praise God in the coming months? I hope so. Each of us was created in the image of God, and yet... We are each unique. We are each a unique individual with unique gifts given to us by God himself. Use your gifts to honor and praise God. God said and did these things for each of us. And each of us can now say that we will give this kind of offering as a sacrifice of praise. I want to close today with this witness statement from my devotional, and I invite you to make this your own witness statement. It goes like this. I was regretting and worrying about the past and fearing the future. Suddenly, the Lord said to me, my name is I am. Do not live in the past, for I am not there. My name is not I was. Do not live in the future. I am not there. My name is not I will be. Meet me in this present moment. For my name is I am. This seems to me to be the ultimate say-so of God. I am means for you and I that we can claim his promises now in this very moment and in every moment after that. Amen. Spread the skies and set the 
Be seated. In our prayer time, in our prayer time, we want to offer all of those joys and concerns, expressions of praise, thanksgiving, thank you, um, that we want to give up to God in this moment. So what are they today on your hearts and minds? Mary. So my mom that you saw that sweet picture of, she's had five kidney surgeries this year and she's been in a nursing home and she called me the other day and my mom likes to be a rock and she cried and she feels kind of hopeless. So if you could just put her in your prayers um, she was living with my sister, with my sister's five children, and my sister and her husband. Um, my sister moved into her house, but the kidney surgery, she has an open pick line in, so she has to be in a care facility, and even when she gets out, she's not extremely mobile. So if you could just pray for even my sister in it as well, because she's the primary caretaker, and... Uh, Susan Freitag is my sister, and then my mom is Kathy. Thank you, Mary. Anna Mary. I have a joy this morning. A friend of mine surprised me by coming to church. Her name is Audrey Carlson. And she is here by way of the medical lending closet. Do you want to tell them that story? Well, <clears throat> I am so happy to be here. And I just want to say thank you to Valencia Church for lending um, wheelchair and a scooter to a little boy who had an accident with his bicycle and um, he's doing really well. I came and gave the scooter and wheelchair back a few days ago and I had promised when I took it that I would be sure to come here and wi worship with you as a thank you. And I am so grateful, and so is the family of the little boy. Thank you. Welcome to worship. Karen. Well, John and I have a joy that uh, we became great-grandparents again yesterday of a little baby boy uh, born down in Annapolis and uh, we're just so happy for the family. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Nancy. 
I just want to um, thank everyone for praying for um, my daughter-in-law, Carol. She had a positive um, visit in Texas at Anderson. They did find the original place where the cancer um, started, and it was in her gallbladder, and changed her chemotherapy, and she's back home now, and she'll start that new chemo this week. So praise the Lord. He is the great physician. Anyone else? Aaron? I just want to lift up my brother, Matt, who's going to go through uh, extensive shoulder surgery this week to repair some damage from a car accident this weekend, or this summer. So, thank you. You know his battle. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you, AJ. Let's take all of these prayers and anything else on our hearts and minds to God. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for um, prayer. We thank you for you hearing us when we speak to you. We thank you for you talking back to us when we listen. And we thank you most of all for the gifts that you give us and the ways that you walk with us in this journey of life. Lord God, we have lifted up prayers and joys and concerns this day to you um, for mom who is in a nursing home and sister who is a caretaker for her. Give, them, give her your health and give them your peace in this journey that they are on. Reassure them of your presence in their lives and bring that joy to their hearts. Lord God, we thank you for uh, visitors in worship and for the ways that our medical lending closet helps people. Continue to strengthen us and prepare us and uh, give us ways of supporting people who have needs of medical equipment and help us to reach out to all those who visit us and who are thankful for that service because we do it in your name. Lord God, we thank you for the joys of, um, of a baby boy and being great grandparents, and we ask your blessing upon the family as they are, are about to embark on some challenges, being new parents. Lord God, we thank you for your healing hand for Carol and the cancer and new chemotherapy that is addressing that cancer. We ask your blessing upon her as she has returned home and will continue a new therapy to address those challenges. Be with her during the coming days and weeks and months. We thank you for surgeries that help to repair shoulders, knees, joints of all kinds and our bodies. Lord God, be with Matt during his upcoming surgery and his recovery. Give him your strength, your healing, and your reassurance in knowing that you are the great physician and that you have him in your care through lots and lots of people. <laughs> Father God, we thank you that you have heard us this day, both in prayer and in worship, and you have joined us. Help us as we leave this place today to join you in what you are already doing around us in the world that we live in. We ask and we pray all of these things in the strong name of Jesus, your Son, who taught us to use these words when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have been instructed in scripture today to do with these words. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. 
So as we share our tithes, our offerings, our gifts, consider how you are doing something good as you share what you have. And then just imagine how your sharing will be pleasing to God himself. So would you join me in dedicating our gifts and our giving today? Lord God, we bring you these gifts, a portion of what you have blessed our lives with. We dedicate these gifts to your work, to your hands and feet in this world as you work to, to draw people closer, to heal people, to provide for the needs of your people. And Lord God, strengthen all of us as we do that work and join in that work. Bless our efforts, bless our giving, bless the giver and receiver in this process that all would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. For we ask all of these things in his name, amen. Thank mm-hmm. you. where you go, where you are, where you find yourself. God has placed you there for a purpose. And Jesus Christ living inside of you will strengthen you, prepare you, and walk with you through that purpose. So go with the love of God, the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the fellowship, guidance, and strength of the Holy Spirit today and every day. Amen.